The smallest broadcast control is in the world is doubtless the Skahoi Micro Series. We have, uh, I think, 10 different of these. And um, I have some exciting news if you like this form factor. Um, but let's just go over what we already have. So this one would be a VU meter. So uh, we have then, um, in this case, a tally system and uh, basically driving tally lights and hooking them up with the different broadcast uh, controllers. This one would be a GPIO box. And uh, then we have this one. That's a control interface with two buttons. So uh, you can program them to, in this case, record and stop or play, so forth. Okay, then we have here uh, one with smart switches. Uh, that's pretty neat. So um, two buttons again, but uh, with dynamic labeling. This would be audio control. So um, on off, uh, audio follow video, volume adjustments, okay. Then we have this one that's uh, like a monitoring thing. It just has an OLED display. So not insanely popular, I have to say. This one is our smart switch menu, which you uh, use to, uh, you can cycle through different options and then uh, adjust these uh, parameters using the encoder. And uh, finally, this one just three buttons. And then we even have this one that was uh, actually, I think we sent a quote to a guy in North Korea. Kim, was it? Yeah. Uh, but he decided not to buy it, which is probably good for the rest of us. And all of these controllers are now substituted or they can be substituted with a cool new one called Microfly. Microfly is this guy. Like the others, it's powered by PoE. So you have signals and power coming over a single cable. And on the front, it has an OLED display and two buttons and a uh, LED bar meter uh, that is really cool. So let's just take a look at this in a close-up, uh, if I can uh, find it right here. Okay, so I have to say it's so tempting to go nuts in configuration of this unit. And if you have seen some of the other videos, you'll know that these are so-called four-way buttons. So they accept different kind of actions depending on which edge of the button you press. So right now what we have, and now you should also look at the Atom software just next to, is this one is a cut button, so it doesn't say, but when I press this edge, you can see I'm cutting between the sources on program and preview. Now, if you look at what happens in this display, it shows you what source is on preview. So guess what? If you press the edge of this button, you are cycling. This is left edge presses, so I'm going back. If I press the right edge, I'm going forward in uh, the number of input sources I have on my preview bus. And then I press cut, I can select source, I can press cut. So it's basically a small video switcher. I think that's pretty amazing. Um, I don't know if it's actually going to be used in real life. Maybe, maybe not, you decide. But you can do it. I think that's fascinating. Now, uh, what is this little one? It's uh, blinking a little bit, actually. You see uh, it's yellow and then it's sometimes green here. It's a VU meter, so we hooked it up with the master output of the video switcher. So you can see as I turn this down, all the way down to zero, we have nothing. And I can turn it up again, and it's increasing, all right? So I wouldn't say it's really detailed. It's a confidence meter, okay? It just gives you confidence that you have audio on the output, but you can also see if it's peaking. So it will become red if it's peaking. So I think that's pretty useful. Okay, what else have we got? Actually, if I press the upper edge on this one, you can see that it's changing to a different mode. So what happens now is that I have volume adjusted for the master, and guess what? If I press this edge, and you can also see it in the software, we are going up and down, and you can of course see that this would be a pretty neat way to adjust the master output volume, which was uh, shown on the LED bar just below. Okay, so now I'm really pushing it up to the top, right there, and I can go the other way again to not peak, like that. All right, so uh, if I press again, <clears throat> I am now uh, at the third menu point I built into this one. So it's it says media player one. I have now index number one in the media player pool. So let's go to the media player pool in the atom switcher. And as I press the edges of this button, you can see I'm cycling which media is in this media pool. So that could be like a lower third or something like that. and we could probably use one of the edges here to um, enable the Kia to show the lower third if we wanted to. And then I also did something crazy on this button. So um, it's colored green. I don't know if you noticed, but um, 
Uh, and basically, if I press the upper edge, I'm just cycling through these three different options. That mainly is uh, about this one. But when I get to the third one, I color this one green to indicate that it's not a cut button anymore, but it's actually an auto button. So when I press it, it, gets, it gives me an auto transition. Okay, it's crazy. It's far out. But that little device actually does substitute audio adjustment. Smart switch keys, regular keys, audio metering, smart switch menus. You don't need them anymore. Monitoring. You have a display. You have the, the, the uh, RGB bar. Three buttons. Well, okay, you have two, but you have four-way buttons. So I think it's like seven of these, unless you have a preference for the good old style um, smart switches. They are lovely. Absolutely. They are pretty cool. And we still sell these. But the Microfly is really, really versatile. It substitutes many of these. Um, and it has a pretty good price tag as well. So uh, we hope you like it. You don't need to go this bananas that we did. But... Um, you can you can settle for less. Uh, you can modify our default configuration or make your own, of course. So enjoy. Let's get this party started.